Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Computer Web Industry. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at online UPS or double conversion UPS. So let's dive right into it. So first you have to understand why there is a need for something so complicated. You have to understand what if your electronic is so expensive like uh, it's very expensive electronics like 4k television uh, your super fancy dolby digital audio sound system your 4k media player your home theater pc and like let's say if you have something so expensive it is justifiable to spend a lot of money to make sure they are protected and let's say you are in a scenario of like it industry where you have servers of it they are quite important and suffice to say if they go down for even a moment you could lose a lot of money uh, and heck you can even compromise security in some scenarios so suffice to say if you have something known as mission critical what is uh, in mission critical scenario you need to have something like this and then you have to uh, understand like many hospitals also use it like you have life support you cannot have a scenario where your life support goes offline so suffice to say it's quite dangerous if that happens and uh, there are things like this happens all around the world where you have a scenario where you cannot afford to lose uh, you know power like atms or uh, uh, broadcast systems or uh, you know anything like that servers are very uh, popular with these sort of things so what does this double conversion do this red point it does power conditioning so basically in that one unit you get stabilizer you get constant voltage transformer you get uh, surge protection you get low voltage cutoff protection. like entire power that is coming out of your online ups is stabilized to a point where there is no fluctuation no matter what happens to your grid it goes down doesn't matter it goes over voltage doesn't matter it goes under voltage does not matter so this whole factor that power conditioning is done because of it it saves a lot of money elsewhere in the system imagine like you are running uh, bank where you have like 10 20 computers instead of getting ups for each one of them you only have to have that or let's say you are running air conditioning on on top of that you don't have to worry about like you know getting a stabilizer for each air conditioning you save money in that way and simplify your operation so suffice to say it's kind of complicated and this is my rough please understand it is a rough attempt to explain online ups and uh, I have seen a lot of diagram but they uh, kind of neglect or sometimes flat out omit quite important sections. So this is my attempt to explain what the hell is happening in the first place and why it's called double conversion UPS. So first you get mains power obviously it comes into it then it goes through filter. Now filter is not necessary and heck even old uh, UPS did not used to have that it's kind of modern thing. They do what's called power factor correction so without that your generator will have hard time driving these things and a lot of other things like inductors capacitors to like basically filter things out from there it goes to rectifier now rectifier makes ac into dc it can be done in many ways it can be done via pulse ah, pulse with modulation or it can be done by simple bridge uh, full bridge rectifiers then you get an output now understand this this rectifier is very overpowered let's say this whole system is rated for 10 kilowatt uh, this puppy has to be rated for much higher than that now that higher depends on the battery bank so that rectifier has to provide power for the whole system plus the power that is needed to charge the battery so let's say battery has a, the c of a battery is generally uh, smaller than the d of the battery basically discharge rate is kind of very high for batteries you can discharge battery at like you know 20 30 amps while you can only charge them at 5 6 amps so suffice to say uh, the c plus the overall load equals the outcome of this rectifier now it does not mean that is giving out that much all the time but it has to able to handle that 24 into 7 now so from that you get dc output now dc output goes to cc charge controller basically this was also not present in very old ups suffice to say it will fry your battery if it does not have it like uh, the fluid that you have in your battery will evaporate very quickly if you have putting in constant amount of current and it's uh, not advisable your batteries will not last long so charge controller handles a lot of things like uh, it monitors the state of charge of your battery like because if battery is 80 percent charge it takes amount uh, the charge goes down if it's like uh, almost fully discharged the charge goes up so 
charge controller controls these sort of things where you have uh, you know how much amp should be put into the battery bank it controls it and it also has a sometimes temperature sensors sometimes on the battery bank sometimes just as the ambient sensor so if environment starts to reach higher than let's say 30 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Celsius it will start to tone down the amp so it does not hurt your battery so that's why charge controller is there now this rectifier output goes to DG uh, DG is like uh, this is the top secret or like patent part of all the systems this is where the switch is in online UPS now when people say online UPS is always running on battery no that's factually impossible practically idiotically stupid because batteries are not capacitors they uh, because of their nature you have to you know separate them while charging and discharging so charge controller gives the output to the battery battery bank is uh, like you know charging up battery has a uh, you know power going into this diode gate now this diode gate you have to look it up for yourself like suffice to say i tried to understand what it is it's kind of complicated and the best i can guess is like there is two input and one output and there is one primary so if primary cuts out then only the second goes in and there is no delay in the situa situation so you are always getting from your rectifier or you're from your battery so you are always running on dc so this diode gate is the one that is you know trade secret or like sometimes they call it buck topology or things of that nature so you have to understand so if power cut happens like if your rectifier uh, goes down this dg will directly allow you to connect your inverter to the battery now so while you have charge controller uh, handling the battery once let's say main fails the battery directly because of this there is no switching delay it is directly goes into your inverter now this inverter is a sine wave inverter so how does that sine wave inverter thing work it's very simple it's just have uh, igbt's and lot of pulse with modulation signals and that also helps it to make sure the voltage output is always constant no matter the state of charge of your battery because as many of you know the battery loses its voltage as it gets discharged so let's say when your battery is fully charged in a lead acid battery it could be as high as 13 to 14 volt and when it's uh, getting discharged it could go as low as 10 to 8 volts so suffice to say you have to compensate for it pulse width modulation allows them to very easily tone down the voltage basically uh, the width of the pulse they can simply like okay if the voltage is too high the pulse will be you know kind of tight and if the voltage is low they can broaden the pulse pulse width basically and to handle that they will design the transformer that goes here after the ac like let's say you are making a 12 volt system you will specifically design it so it directly runs on 10 volt basically the cutoff voltage of your battery bank so the transformer is capable of lifting up that voltage to the full output so if you mention old ups's and uh, especially inverters square wave inverters have this horrific tendency as the battery goes down you can almost uh, see everything becoming dim lights becoming dim fan becoming slow that is not acceptable with this so for this reason the transformers in these things are generally designed to work at the lowest voltage level possible for the battery bank so let's say the battery bank is 96 volt and they let's say just for a comparison let's say it can go down to 85 volt safely so they will build the transformer from that voltage and this is one way there can be 10,000 other ways this is one way that I found they handle it now you get the uh, inverter inverter is doing the pulse width modulation after that pulse width modulation uh, that AC signal is go to the transformer now this is where you get your isolation this is where the power conditioning actually pays off because there is no direct con connection from in to out nothing goes through here like there like no matter what kind of fluctuation you have in your mains it does not transfer here this is what's called galvanically isolated basically this is completely isolated for all electrical reasons and some UPSs have almost all have a fault detection where if let's say this unit fails they will have a static switch that will bypass the ups so even if the ups fails you won't have like you know complete fail all it will do is simply bypass it to mains or sometimes they could bypass after the filter it because generally filter are a thing that don't break down that easily so they can uh, directly bridge from here or here or sometimes there could be just a manual switch that if your ups goes down you flip that switch and you can disconnect the ups and maintain it so this is the whole process for it so a quick summary you have filtered 
you made ac into dc you feed that dc into inverter plus the charge controller and it goes through a diode gate and when the power goes on it diode gate directly bridges the battery to the inverter and from inverter you get to a transformer which galvanically isolates your whole thing and you get a stable load output so this is the whole idea of double current because you are always running on dc and inverter is the one that is controlling your frequency your voltage there is no fluctuation ideally like of course there will be minor fluctuation here and there but ideally it's so low that all high uh, you know all components can last very long so this is the whole topology now i have to understand uh, if this is so good why the heck it's so expensive you know of course the need would be so high that it should be cheap but you have to understand these are designed to run 24 into 7 into 365 basically and that should also run as long as their warranty is there so suffice to say three to five years the reason for that is it never ever turns off there is no off like your ups the very old ups style that we used to have simply bypass the mains so the rectifier stage will only work as long as it needs to charge the battery once the battery is charged it's cut off here it has to work 24 into 7 as long as the any load is connected to the ups it has to work so that is a very big problem and a rectifier also has to be overbuilt it's like full load plus the charger load so over there and inverter also needs a feedback loop generally sine wave have it but it's also kind of a compulsory for uh, sine wave uh, compulsory for online ups because without a feedback loop the pulse width modulation cannot be controlled properly so it cannot guess it has to know the voltage that is sending out let's say is uh, 220 volt is has to be 220 volt it cannot be 210 volt or 230 volt it has to be 220 and they will generally give you a very tight range so you don't need any stabilizer you don't need any ups or uh, cvt or anything in your products so one thing uh, i want you guys to take away from it is that power and capacity of this sort of thing is completely independent second uh, the reason why uh, all the ups's are rated in kva rather than uh, you know kilowatt hour or amp power it's uh, very simple K kva is independent of power factor depending on the load each object like let's say a jet pump or a tube light even though they could be rated for same wattage they will have different power factors based on that power factors their power consumption actually varies a lot so that's why they generally use kva and also kva is generally bigger than kilowatt so uh, 30 percent lower is a very good idea it's a safe bet so let's say you get a 10 kv 10 kva uh, ups only put 8 kilowatt of it uh, 8 kilowatt load don't put 10 kilowatt load it you will fry the ups second how long will it run that's directly proportional to the battery size now you might say okay it says 24 volts so that means two battery again in two battery watt amp power you can have as low as 7 amp power to 220 i just bought a inverter and those batteries are idiotically expensive my ups is cheap but that batteries are expensive so be mindful these two things are quite independent so there are uh, microtech ups that is quite cheap and pure online but uh, and it also has six batteries so you'll be like oh this is gonna run for hours but battery capacity is barely 800 watts so suffice to say it will only you know if you have a 4k tv it will only run for two hours at max so suffice to say this was my presentation of online double conversion ups i hope you like this presentation in that case please like if you didn't dislike leave a comment and uh, tell me what you want to see next in computer awareness day and as always subscribe press the bell icon i make video every day and thanks for watching